Hey everybody, DJ here, and this is the next part of the Natron Crash Course, where we're going to be basically adding some effects and doing some color grading to our first image. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. We also have a Discord server that you can check out and a Patreon, and the links are provided in below in the video description. If you donate enough to get to the higher tiers, you get digital downloads like the image files for this particular project. But don't worry if you are not a patron, you can still create this project on your own if you check out the tutorial series on creating a logo inside of Blender. And I'll put that link below in the description as well. So what we're gonna do first is I'm just gonna show you inside of Natron here, what we're going to be doing at the end of a couple of these tutorials. So you're not gonna start off with this right away. Um, we're going to be working on a couple things to get to the point where we are exporting this image. But just keep in mind that this is basically what we're going to end up doing. We're going to be going from this straight export here out of Blender. And we're going to be doing a bunch of visual effects work and some layering and glow effects and things like that until we get to something like this. So before we actually go into Natron, I want to show you what happens inside of Blender and what happens when we export files, because you need to make sure that you're exporting your files correctly. So when we create something in CG, or especially in uh, Blender here, there's a lot of shortcuts and shorthanded ways that we've um, had developed into this program that makes it easier for artists. So you don't have to know so much when you're like kind of creating these images, okay? If you go down to this little uh, drop down here called color management, you've probably been told many times in a lot of different tutorials to change this view transform to filmic because it's more accurate to what the color information would be if you're taking a real photo of something. Okay. And someone might tell you that you should change this to a medium contrast or a high contrast or something like that, because that's generally what people like to see in an output setting for the image. Now here's the problem. If we take a look here at the image and we zoom in, you can see that there's all this detail here that looks pretty nice, okay? You can see all the ridges and you can see all of the white and dark information or white and blacks, um, all of that. It's a little bit more what would you know normally be called a normalized image, okay? Meaning that there aren't values that are like way blown out and there aren't anything, there aren't any blacks that are really, really, really black. Now, if we take a look here and we change this to a, instead of filmic, we change this to something else. And I'm just going to take this, I'm going to move it over here, and I'm going to take this and I'm going to change this from, actually, let's do this. Let's go here, and because this will be easier, um, and change this to our render result. And we're going to take the filmic and we're going to change this to standard. Now, you should have seen a huge change in the way the color was being uh, transformed here. And what we've gotten used to as Blender users is these sort of shorthanded shortcut ways, whatever you want to call it, to uh, sort of fix up our image to be more correct so we don't have to do a lot of work in the back end. And then when you get to the compositing tab here, when you put in your effects and everything and then you save out your image. So if we go here and we save out our image as a PNG, for example, if we go into the where I'm saving the, these files, if we save a JPEG or a PNG of this, it's baking in that color transform. So we're seeing this really cool, you know, um, graded look to our image. Now, the problem is that in order for us to really do VFX the way that it's done in the, you know, standard AAA film, Hollywood style, whatever you want to call it, in, in real studios, they you often will use EXRs because you can put a lot of information there and you can adjust a lot more of the coloring and pull some values out that you can't in these other types of files, okay? Basically, what we want is we want this EXR, okay? So you would change this to open EXR, change the codec here to an, a none value for the codec, and then we would save that image. And I already have that saved, so I'm not going to do it again. So let's go ahead and jump into Natron and we're going to grab our files here and we're going to take the JPEG and we're just going to drag it in, take the PNG and drag it in, and take the EXR and drag it in. And basically the important thing here is to sort of like take note of what we're seeing. So here's the JPEG. 
you can see that the um, lookup has been applied. So you can see that it's not blown out. And if we look through the PNG here and press one to view through the this one here, um, it looks the same. And if we jump to the different ones by hitting one on these different read nodes, you can see that they're basically the same. Now, if we look at the EXR here, you can see that the difference is quite stark. It's uh, the whites are very blown out. It's actually hard to see the detail here. And if we hit two on the PNG here, so we have two different uh, views, go up here and change this to wipe under and move your uh, the cursor, the, the uh, crosshair that shows up, move that over to like the center and you can view between the two and see the differences. And that's a pretty big deal. There's There's a lot of difference between these two and that's because this one on the left had that lookup table um, or that color transform applied and the one on the right did not. This is that standard view and this is that filmic view. Now we can throw a very quick uh, sort of like replication of a filmic view if we hit tab and we start to type in lookup and you can see there's right here it says color lookup and take this right here and plug it right into this EXR and then let's hit one to view through there. And it might take a moment. And if for you, it's very, very slow, you can go up here where it says proxy mode, click this on and change this so that it is, you know, a uh, the higher the value, the more um, sort of pixelated it will be. But you'll also get to see quicker results when you're playing your animations or just viewing the different transforms that you're doing. So let's make sure that we're looking uh, two through here and one through here. And you can see all this stuff over here. I'm not really gonna get too much into how to use uh, curves and all that with the color lookup, but I wanna show you this right here. If you change this master curve mode, if you change this to film-like, and then you click this button here that says clamp white, you can see that now you're getting more of what you would kind of expect to see. Um, out of some clamped values. And it's not perfect or anything like that, but this is just an example of how a color lookup can actually change quite a bit of what your image looks like, okay? Now, the great thing about EXRs, and I'm just gonna hit this little X button to get rid of all this information over here. And we're actually gonna change this to look through there and do like this. The really great thing about using EXRs and um, what's called a lossless file type with higher bit depth for color, which the EXR is 32-bit and the PNG is not, this can be 8 or 16, or the JPEG here, which is a different color bit depth, is that you have um, a lot more information and this is sort of like three tiers of information. You have a JPEG, which is kind of like, this is why a lot of places, uh, internet sites and all that use JPEGs is because it's the lowest um, or a lower color bit depth, therefore the file type is smaller. The PNG has more information being stored in it. Um, usually there's an alpha channel that's applied. If we look through the JPEG here, you can see there's no alpha channel. So that is a difference between the two. There's just more information going on. And then if we look through the EXR here, there's an alpha channel, but there's also a lot more color that's being held inside of this node. So what we wanna do here is we want to kind of like grade this. We want to get this so that it's not looking like this. Now, some of you guys will say, well, you need to change your lighting inside of Blender and then re-render that. Well, that's all fine, except we really don't need to do that. Um, all we really need to do is grade this with a grade node and we can control the whites and blacks and the midtones and all that with uh, some different nodes here. So what we're gonna do is go up here and we're gonna choose the grade node right here and you can hit, you can actually hit tab and just type in grade and it will show up there in the search. And then from here, you can basically pull these values around, pull the, the white point down, move the lift, move the gain, uh, use the multiply. You can do all of these different things here to change these values. You can make it like super dark, all that kind of stuff. Now, I happen to know that the grading that I want 
is a, and we can type in the values right here. So right here, it's a negative 0 0.019. Then the white point here, I know I want this to be 1.7510. I know that the lift, I'm going to reset and reset all of these. And I know that this is the grading that I want to use to begin adding the layering. And you can see there's still a little bit of blown out stuff here. And that's OK, because we're actually going to add some glow effects and all that over the top of this. So this is actually OK. But you could go in and change that up more. Now, the next thing that we're going to do also is we're going to add a color correct. So if we hit tab here and we search for a color correct, we can take the source right here, plug it in, hit one so that we're viewing through the color correct. And you can play with these as much as you want. And I've already done some of this work, so you don't have to sit here and watch me sort of play with it. But from here, it's basically the same thing that you would expect to see from other programs or applications like Photoshop or uh, DaVinci Resolve or even in Blender. There's a color correct uh, set of wheels and everything that you can choose from. You can move around all of this stuff here, the saturation, the contrast, the gamma, the gain, everything like that, and the shadows, midtones, and highlights we can make some adjustments here. And this is how you can really um, color your film and uh, change the overall kind of look of your image. So what I did here was I took the contrast and I made this a 1.282. And then the gamma, I actually have a color that I put in here. So if I go here, you can actually change the color of the background. You can see that as I'm moving this around, the shadows are being colored differently. Don't worry about this here. Um, and I know that the color I want is 223, and then 18 here, and 255, 255, and hit OK. So we have a little bit of a blued sort of like background here. Next, I'm going to go into the midtones. And I know that, let me just reset this here. So. You can click this right here. That will basically force the window to reset uh, the render. So from here, if I go to the midtones, and I want the contrast here to be a 0.887. And for the gamma, I use the color here as well. And that's going to be 100, 3, and 255. Let's hit this refresh again. So there we have that. And for the gain here, oops, the gain here, I'm going to make this 0.861. Now for the last part here, the highlights, so we can adjust some of this right here. If we go into highlights, the contrast, I made this 0.934. And then for the gamma, or actually the gain here, I set this to a 0 0.7908. So you can see right up here, that pulled those highlights down so it's a little bit more normalized. So one thing you might be asking at this point is, OK, well, whatever. You have this EXR. These are huge files if you compare it to these other ones. So if you take a look at the properties here, you can see this is 91.8 megabytes. And if we look at this one here, the JPEG, it's 2.83. And you're thinking, OK, well, whatever. Like, this JPEG is fine. What's the deal? Well, the problem here is that a JPEG is just not going to be able to give you the actual quality you need. The EXRs and even PNGs to a certain extent will just give you more high dynamic range. They'll give you a lot more color information. You'll be able to pull highlights a lot easier. And when you're adding glow effects or you're uh, altering or you're using your original image to alter things like a green screen replacement for a background or something like that, the bigger the format, like an EXR, the more color, bit depth, and information you have, the easier it is to actually do these uh, compositing effects. So a lot of people, they end up getting confused when they're inside of Blender, and they do their compositing. So if we go to the compositing tab here, and you do this stuff, and then you try and pull a JPEG or a PNG even that you rendered out from your just regular uh, render layers, you try to do some effects changes and stuff like that, and you go, hey, what the heck? This isn't... Uh, I'm not able to pull glow effects. I'm not able to pull the color information as easily as before. And that's because you've lost color information. So 
you can get away sometimes with a PNG or a uh, a um, half float value EXR, which I'm not really going to go too much into. But really for right now and for this beginning compositing stuff, what you want to try to do is get 32-bit EXRs that are uncompressed so that you can work with those to really create some cool effects, at least in the beginning, so that you can understand how it works properly. And then you can start to try to use PNGs and other sort of smaller file formats. And I know I'm kind of like going over this relatively quickly because I'm trying to keep this video short. But if you go online, you can go to places like this uh, plural site here, or if you just do a Google search for the differences between PNG, EXRs, and JPEGs, you can see a bunch of information here about color bit depth, what kind of files to use, and all that. So definitely do your research. Um, there's a lot of information out there about this. So feel free to go online and review and research to your heart's content. But for right now, as far as anybody who really doesn't care about that, all you need to know is that the the higher the bit depth or the bigger your file, usually the better it's going to be for color grading, for adding effects, and stuff like that. So at this point, let's go ahead and save our file. File, save project as. Let's uh, go to our, we're going to call this, I'm going to add a new folder here, and we're going to call this Natron, uh, let's just call it color grade, Natron color grading, and go in there, and we'll just name this color grading tutorial. So pretty much that's going to be it for this particular video. I know we didn't do a whole lot, but I'm the the whole purpose of this is to really try to drive home the point that your beginning file formats, whatever it is that you're using them for when you bring them into here is really really important. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. Hopefully you learned something about how to export your files from Blender properly to prepare them for Natron and color grading and adding the visual effects layers. And I will see you guys next time when we start to add some glow effects and some other compositing effects over the top of our image. And I'll see you next time on DJ Tutorials.